I love a good mystery. And over the weekend, we were treated with one. There were some pictures of V going around, and it looked like he found an earring on stage. Then eagle-eyed fans narrowed it down to two suspects, Sana and Wendy. Then, after some on-the-edge-of-your-seat investigations, the earrings were concluded to be Wendy's because at one point, you don't see her with one of them on. But some people said Sana lost hers too, but it probably was Wendy's. And as satisfying as that was, the next mystery I want to solve is what happened after V found it. Well, like, what happens in the next episode? Is there a very expensive lost and found there? Does he give it to his manager and the manager goes from waiting room to waiting room asking if anyone lost an earring? Does V just go do it himself? That's the start of a drama, right? Like a Korean idol Cinderella. Do we have any talented KJC writers on staff right now? If you have one, tell me your best conclusion to the story. Long, short, sad, happy, whatever it is. I'll get my K-pop corn ready, which by the way will be sold at the K-pop Junk Eats Cafe. Alright, that's my Red Velvet segue. Let's talk about something a little more serious regarding the girls. So, I don't understand Sasang fans. Maybe you guys can help me better comprehend. When you're a fan, why would you go to such lengths, not only to invade someone's privacy and get their numbers, but to constantly call and harass them? That's, that's crazy. That's an anti-fan. That's not a fan. That's hater behavior. During the weekend, Wendy, Irene, Sugi, and Joy went on a live stream to talk to their fans. They were eating, winding down, having a good time. I even caught the later part of the live, but apparently before that, just minutes after they started, Joy's phone started to constantly vibrate, and you can tell the girls were bothered, but still tried to keep up the atmosphere by playfully telling these sassing fans, you know what, not fans, trying to playfully tell these people to stop calling. When Joy wouldn't pick up, these trolls then started to call Sogi's phone, which was the one streaming, so it kept interrupting the feed. They would stop for a bit and then call again. Joy had to keep declining the phone calls and eventually just turned it off completely. You know how we were talking earlier about, oh, I wonder what happens after this and that? Well, I wonder what happened after they went live. Again, it looked like it was nighttime. It looked like they were winding down. Not to mention they were in Vietnam, another country. They were probably exhausted. So what if they just kept getting disturbed throughout the night? Imagine not being able to turn off your phone because of the nature of your job and dealing with this all night. It's gotta be scary to always have that lingering thought, if they have my phone number, what else can they find? Address? Family? Every time this happens, I always wonder, do they have to change their numbers and constantly notify everyone over and over again? And I saw a lot of responses of people wanting the respective companies to be more protective of their artists and employees. But where do you guys think that balance is? The balance between being protective and watching over certain things versus giving your artists some freedom and room to breathe outside of work without worrying about stalkers or their own safety. We want them to have cell phones and private lives, but we also want companies to be over it enough to prevent these things. I don't know, besides intense legal action, I'm struggling to think of a solution that doesn't tip the scale too far to one side. By the way, whoever did this, you better hope Irene doesn't find out who you are. She doesn't seem like someone you want to piss off.